Under the EU-Turkey deal, are refugees safe? Is Europe protected from illegal migration? Follow me to find out. Welcome to Actua TV. Welcome to your Europe. Among the hundreds of thousands of refugees that have come from Turkey via Greece and the rest of Europe, thousands of them were illegal migrants. The EU summit of March the 18th decided to control, even eliminate legal immigration by setting the EU-Turkey deal, the widely known as resettlement plan, according which all irregular migrants crossing from Turkey to the Greek islands will be returned to Turkey, while for every Syrian being returned to Turkey from the Greek islands, another Syrian will be resettled to the EU. The goal is to deter migrants from making illegal crossings, mainly by sea between Turkey and Greece. Within these frames, Turkey is committed to the EU that will take any necessary measures to prevent new sea or land routes for irregular migration from Turkey to the EU. In the same time, the EU will accelerate the disbursement of the approved 3 billion euros aid package to Turkey. In the meanwhile, how many of these measures are on track? How many refugees have been settled in the EU and how many are still in Turkey? Can these measures guarantee their safety? Well, all these questions will answer for us Mrs. Kati Piri, a member of the European Parliament, registered with the group of the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats and a member of the Committee on Foreign Affairs. Mr. Piri, welcome. Thank you. Well, to begin with, at least the main points of the EU-Turkey deal are implemented properly by now, meaning how many refugees are settled in within the Europe or how many refugees are settled back in Turkey? Well, that part of the deal, unfortunately, I have to say, when it comes to resettlement of refugees from Turkey to the European Union, is still very low. I think the number is just above 100 people who have been resettled from Turkey to the European Union and more or less 300 people who have now been sent from Greece back to Turkey. So that part of the deal, uh, you can't say that this is already a working, uh, a working progress. On the other hand, what you see is that Turkey did change its legislation, made it stricter uh, for many people to get a visa to enter Turkey. They did uh, spend more money on, on uh, together also with the EU on providing better care for the refugees who are at this moment in Turkey and of course what they do much better than in the past is to guard their borders because what we see is a uh, much less uh, almost no people at this stage actually arriving in Greece coming from Turkey. So is there a, a progress in, in the old process? Well, there is a bit of progress. Of course, the question is all about implementation. The deal was on paper. Now, how is the implementation? Some politicians who were only interested in getting the number of people arriving, getting them down, they already call it a big success. I wouldn't say so. I still see that refugees are stuck in Turkey who would like to leave. Not for everyone is already able to get a better life perspective in Turkey. This is also a process of time when it comes to education, when it comes to labor market. You know, before legislation takes into effect, as we know the Turks allow now Syrians to work in Turkey, but it takes some months before this actually materializes. And until that time, people are stuck there and Europe seems to forget these people. Well, to change a bit the viewpoint, can we say that European citizens, Europe is protected from illegal immigration after the implementation of the EU-Turkey deal? Well, if you say the word protected, it sounds like there was a threat coming from uh, immigration. Uh, these were, of course... I'm my... referring to illegal immigration. But there are no legal ways to, to migrate to the Europe. So automatically refugees had to choose the illegal ways. You know, if you have no option to go to an office, ask for political asylum in the European Union, and you still come to Europe as a refugee, still you call I'm it illegal referring, migration. Still, I am not referring to the term refugee, but to the term migration. 
But that was not a problem. I'll be on. I mean, if you look at the the numbers, 90% of the people arriving in Europe were people from refugee countries. So illegal migration of non-refugees was, was already 10%. a very small percentage. It's a very small percentage. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we all agree that these people who don't have a right for refugee status in Europe must be sent back. And for this also the EU-Turkey deal provides a return of those people who are coming for economic reasons only to Europe. There is no space at this moment in the European Union. But of course the large, the big number of people who arrived were of course people in need of international protection and for them I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't frame it as a threat that it was facing Europe, but let's be honest, it was of course because it was uncontrolled, because it was not managed, I mean it was managed only by smugglers, and we saw the costs, uh, the cost, the dear costs of lives actually in the Aegean Sea, of course something had to change. Well, uh, now can we say, can we say that Europe can ensure that refugees are safe, meaning that when they are deported back in Turkey, they won't be sent back in Syria, for example. Of course, we know Turkey is hosting more or less 3 million Syrian refugees. And of course, I read the reports of Amnesty International and I even there were some journalists who reported back about what's happening with certain Syrians who are being pushed back uh, to, into Turkey. This is very worrying and I think also in this parliament we have made clear to the Commission that this has to be investigated and discussed with the Turks. But of course this is not happening with three million Syrian people. It did happen with a couple of hundred and it's extremely serious, extremely serious. So it means those people we are also sending back from Greece to Turkey. If there are also Syrian refugees, we must have guarantees strong guarantees by the Turkish government that these people will not be, against all international law, be pushed back into a war territory. Well, there is no record of anyone we have sent back so far to be pushed back. I mean, you can never have absolute guarantees, but I see Turkish government, who for five years has been hosting millions of refugees, much more than Europe has done actually over the last five years, I don't see an incentive for them to now massively push back Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. But on those individual cases where there have been clear also, I mean, facts presented to us by Amnesty International, we must enter into a genuine dialogue with Turkey that this is not part of the deal. It is part of the deal that they will have to continue to respect the rights of refugees, which means they cannot be sent back to a war torn country like Syria. Progress is very small. We see, I was in Greece last week, Mm -hmm. And what I see is still 50,000 people being stuck there because European countries are not offering relocation. The registration of 50,000 people takes time. You know, in Greece, of course, where in the past many civil servants had to be fired, now suddenly many people are needed in order to register and provide uh, sufficient shelter for these 50,000 people. What I see over the past four weeks, that since we have the deal, is that more people are being made available, but if you ask me, it's still way too slow. We cannot have that 50,000 people within the European Union are still not having sufficient protection, are, not, are still unclear about their future. Will they be able to ask for asylum in Greece? Will they be able to be relocated or reunited with their family in other countries? And you know, this is where we would have to really speed up things. Can we trust Turkey, meaning that having in mind that Turkey is a country that has no press freedom? Well, I mean, it's clear that there are big problems in Turkey with human rights, with rule of law. Like you say, as a part of it, of course, with press freedom, but also, for instance, with the situation in the southeast of the country, where there is a heavy fighting going on between the state army and PKK. So in general, one can say, of course, we have concerns about Turkey. I think this parliament is also very vocal on those concerns. Does that mean you cannot make agreements with a country? No, I think, uh, you know, closing, shutting the door to Turkey, saying we don't want to talk to you about anything, not about refugees, not about foreign affairs, will not make Turkey a more democratic country. So we must engage, but we must engage in a genuine 
dialogue. Mm -hmm. And which means if we discuss the situation about refugees, we cannot be silent about human rights abuses happening in Turkey. At this week, when the Commission will present probably it looks like uh, the, the package to the European Parliament to lift the visa requirements for Turkish citizenship. We see in the Turkish Parliament a debate about stripping MPs from their immunity. You know, so I, I cannot say that the relationship between the EU and Turkey is a perfect one, but we need to engage in a dialogue. Let's be honest to each other. So I also expect from European leaders to speak up on press freedom, to speak up and call for peace back in the country when it comes to the talks with the PKK to be restarted. Because otherwise, this will never become a real cooperation between equal partners. I have to sincerely thank you. And thank you all of you. See you next week.